Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Measuring Dev Skills with Code Signal. It's me, your friend Pat, and today we're gonna take a look at free coding tasks. Now, just to be a little more specific about what I'm talking about when I say free coding tasks, these are the kind of things that don't really involve automated testing. So I know most of the ones we've looked at before have been sort of in the automated testing area, but a free coding task would be to serve sort of more in between needs. So uh, various ways that the platform could be used without automated testing. So in all the ones we're gonna look at today, the expectation is that there would be some kind of human um, observation for them, whether it's that they're actually viewing the development live for the candidate or whether they're actually looking into the replay. But the main thing is that for all the ones we're gonna look at today, there isn't any automated testing involved. So they won't get like a score or something like that. At the end of it, you would have to look at it manually. But in some cases, that might be exactly what you're looking for. So to explore a few of those cases, we're gonna to go to create task. Now we've looked at how to create tasks before. I think we did an episode recently where we went through basically all of these. We're gonna focus on free coding for now. Uh, we're also gonna look at free front end afterwards. So I'm gonna say create task. And then basically we can just type in whatever we want here. Uh, we've technically looked at one like this before in a previous episode on test-driven development. And the idea in that case is that we were uh, looking for the candidate to basically build their own tests because that's one of the things we might want to assess for, right? That's a big responsibility on the job as a professional dev. You might want to test your code, right? So it makes sense that we would wanna have some kind of task related to developing your own tests and then actually writing the code that the tests will be used for. But in this case, I wanna look at some kind of different use cases of the platform here. So generally, when would we wanna do something like this? So that test-driven development, that was a good example. Um, other times when we might want to uh, have a human looking at this rather than some sort of automated test might be where we have sort of, um, I guess I'd say more subjective needs when the question is like a, a little more open-ended, not necessarily to the point of being open-ended like a free text problem, but in the sense of like, okay, let's say for example, I want to say, a, uh, let's call this task ES6 modernize, okay? so. We'll just say like given the following JavaScript code, convert it to modern ES6. Whoops, had the shift button held down still. Uh, okay, so we're gonna provide the user with some JavaScript code and they need to modernize it to the sort of ES6 equivalent. So basically right now you'll notice it says default starter code over here. There isn't anything there quite yet, but if I go down and select JavaScript, I can say add custom starter code, and immediately it's gonna give me some JavaScript over here. So it's starting with the console log in the same way that this would start out in an interview setting using the interview tool if we had selected JavaScript. So specifically the code I wanna give is maybe some sort of function over here. Um, I'm gonna call it find X, and we're given some sort of array as, uh, as the input here. So I'll just say like var X is assigned the value of five, and we'll just return whether it's in the array. So array.index of X is greater than negative one. So nothing wrong with this code over here. So I'm gonna save the starter code. Uh, but basically the, the, you might view this as a problem that like, you know, we're using var, it might be nicer to use let or const or something like that. We're doing array.index of, it'd be nicer to use like includes or something like that. Uh, but you know, maybe the candidate has some other way of doing it. We don't necessarily want it to just be let or just be const. Uh, we don't necessarily want them to just use includes. Maybe there's some other way we want to think of, uh, of using ES6. And I mean, this is just a simple example. We could build out something a lot more extensive for this uh, where there'd be a lot more more opportunities to kind of modernize it. So this would be a good fit for something like a free coding task because it's less specific what the actual uh, guidelines are or like the win condition, I guess, in this case. So it's, it's harder for us to automate something like this by saying like, yeah, you got 300 out of 300. Um, 
when it's more of a subjective thing, you know, like does this look modern enough, basically. Uh, a nice thing about this is we can basically use free coding for any kind of task where we mainly just want to use like the syntax highlighting or code completion features of the IDE. I'm going to go ahead and save this task, by the way, and that should bring us straight to it. So here we go, ES6 modernize. Looks like I had Java already selected, but going over to JavaScript, we've got our custom starter code over here. We've got our very brief description, and basically we would just solve this problem, we'd submit it, and uh, then at some point someone would review that, right? They'd be able to watch the replay of the code, see exactly what our thought process was. I mean, that's a big thing I hear from clients that they're most interested in telling what the user, what the candidate's thought process was. So the replay would be a really valuable tool in that case. Okay. Uh, this is an example of a free coding. I just want to go back to tasks over here because we're going to try making a free front end one now. So I'm going to go to create task and you'll notice right off the bat, pretty similar to what we saw in the last example, except uh, there's a little less here. There isn't like a starter code area. Uh, we can get into that in just a sec, but for this one, I'm just going to provide like a very simple mockup. This is a really nice environment, the, the free front end task, because it's just going to provide us with an HTML, CSS, and JS file. So we'll have multiple files available. And we can just vaguely state our description here. We can say something like, uh, here, recreate this. Something I should have mentioned earlier is that whether we're working on free coding, free front end, or really any other type of task, whether it's a quiz or a single function algorithmic task, we always have the option to use Markdown, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna use Markdown to create an image. I'll just call this Mock as the name, and I'll just paste in the URL to the image over here. It is an emoji, so we'll just say uh, like emoji test or something like that for the title. I'm gonna save this one, and here we go. Okay, so recreate this. Now again, we've looked at front end tasks in the past. We've looked in previous episodes at uh, things where it, it gives you some sort of mock-up and we need to make our, our preview look like that according to some specific test. So in the case where it's like, um, we looked at the challenge statistics one as one of our first tasks. And basically the idea is that uh, we specifically need to meet particular guidelines. You know, is it exactly a width of 150 pixels? Is it exactly or, or within 90% of like this color kind of thing? Is it in this exact layout? In this case, we're maybe thinking like, eh, we're gonna take it easy here. I mean, however you can create this thing, that's fine. Uh, if you wanna do it using like an HTML5 canvas, go for it. If you want to use more CSS kind of stuff, go for it. If you want to try to make this using SVG, go for it. The point is, uh, this is more open-ended, right? We want to see uh, not just what the final product is, not just how many tests the candidate was able to pass, but we kind of want to get a sense of like their style when creating something like this. So this would be a good fit for something a little more open-ended as it allows them to do it like however they want basically, right? Again, we would need someone to look at this afterwards to see not just what the final product was, but maybe sort of view the replay to see what the thought process was along the way. Uh, but we can get a lot out of this. There may be a lot of different ways someone can solve this task. So it's a good fit for the free front end. Okay, the last thing I wanted to take a look at here was actually within the context of the interview tool. So we've looked at this before. I mean, the interview tool is what we use for a lot of the earlier episodes. Uh, but basically, as soon as you get into an interview, so assuming I would have like a, a candidate on the other end that we're interviewing, we could actually treat this window right here as just a straight up free coding environment. We could go to edit and write a description for our problem here, uh, or we could not do that and go to select task. Uh, what did we call that last one? I think it was emoji test. So let's try that. There it is, emoji test, we'll confirm that. And now here it is. So rather than having to watch the replay in this case, I could actually watch live as the candidate codes this thing out. So that's cool. If I wanted to provide some sort of boilerplate code at this point, I, I could just put it right in here, you know, HTML, that kind of thing, right? Close the HTML tag. Anyway, 
so basically, we can provide whatever we want uh, to the candidate. We can interact with them as much as we want. You know, we don't have to. We could just like sit back silently, see what they do. Uh, we could help them out, give them hints along the way, that sort of stuff. As I said, we could paste in some code here to help them out or even make some edits to what they're doing. Or we could not do that at all. It's totally up to you. So anyway, hopefully this gives you a clear sense of how we could use something like a free coding or a free front end task for these kind of more open ended kind of questions, what I would call sort of the, the in between needs, right? When we don't need the, the full on power of an automated test suite. And the other thing is these are a lot easier to create. It takes a lot less time to make a task like this. So uh, they're also favorable, favorable for that reason. Anyway, that's, I think, all I had to say about this. So thanks so much for tuning in. What a pleasure it's been. Uh, I'll see you again next week for another episode. And uh, until then, bye for now.